came to Vi four years ago, um, it was a very much a product technology company. You'd come into an EPC session with us and we would give you a nice shiny box and say that it can do this, it ticks all these boxes. Customers would walk away and they go, fine, I've got that. Hasn't really adapted to my company or looked at my uh, demands, my customers. And that's something where Britannic and Avaya's approach has changed in, since those last four years, where we've shifted as a company globally from a technology product company to now 70% of our um, revenues globally are support and services and software. And the reason we do that is because we are confident, and the reason we're global leaders in contact center, in unified comms, we've got the networking backbone, we've got the video piece that Morris touched upon, we can show some of that shortly. And even security, it's that whole wrapped approach where we can give you the pipe and the, the backbone of that technology which allow you to build up to this idea of this omni-channel and enabling your customers and your customers' customers to be able to contact you. Now, what I'm going to go through is this, this idea of the autonomous customer in 2015. My little brother and sister, what we call the millennial age, and I was in it a few years ago. So many, the way that people are interacting with customers and companies is completely changed. You think um, iPads, for example, didn't even exist five years ago. How that's changed? When someone said, oh, an iPad, everyone was like, why would I need an iPad when I've got a laptop? This sort of technology with the, with the launch of Facebook, Twitter, the social media, um, it's, it's all driven a different change in the consumer power. So much better access to information. Consumers are, are shopper swaps, protecting their rights. We do a lot of the, um, work at the moment with car dealerships. Think about the car dealership transaction of 10 years ago. You'd go to a forecourt and it, typically I think there was a staff, you'd, you'd spend five visits to go into a forecourt before you bought a car. Now, my little brother's buying a moped at the moment. He goes online, he knows exactly what moped he wears, what engine it is, what one's, uh, you know, what is the best one, what colour he wants. He goes and it's literally a one stage transaction when he walks onto that forecourt. Car dealerships are struggling to, to adopt that. And equally, are they able to go on the car dealership's website, launch a, a live chat, and have a chat to the sales agent that knows about that bike? They're struggling with it. So we're helping underpin that information so you get the same experience across the voice the email, the web chat, the social media. But what it's enabling you as customers to do is sort out what which Rich alluded to is that hygiene layer, that multi-channel, we sort that out very simply, and then you can start building the blocks on top of it. And it's, uh, you know, again, someone alluded to that big, big bang chain shift. It's never gonna happen in one day. It's a technology relationship and partnership where both us as a via Tannic as partners can come in and have a look and bespoke it for you guys. Self-service to gain control. So self-service is giving consumers choice and control. You know, uh, Morris touched upon Amazon. You never actually speak to Amazon on the call, on, a, on the phone. It's always it's delivered through the website. That is great for them. They don't have to employ after a large contact center. Contact centers in the past, you know, when I, I don't know if sort of Channel 4 documentary, it's that like big warehouse, people are taking millions of calls, inbound and outbound. Yes, it's a contact center, but actually what people don't realize is any, any company that are taking calls from their customers, taking emails from their customers, how are you as IT people, as contact centre managers, as business decision makers, capturing that experience? So email, you know, again, Rich touched on earlier, that's a really key piece. So many companies come in here and say, I'll say, what, what do you do for email? Uh, well, um, an email comes into a group inbox and my agents can take an hour out of the day and they sort of cherry pick the best ones and we'll get a response. They can't go at the end of that month to the board and say, we took in a thousand emails this month out of those, 80% turned into a revenue making calls, 20% were bad demand, the other were good demand, start getting that ROI and that integration of that email, do it on the voice, we've got the voice reporting, start doing it with email, start doing it with web chat. So you as companies can see how your agents are actually um, you know, developing for that day. What does their day look like? And it's all about that data capture across that on the channel. They help other customers. Long gone are the days where you have a crap flight with Virgin, you go down the pub on a Friday night and you tell your five mates that was really bad and it doesn't go any further. You put on Twitter now, I had a really bad, at Virgin that was really bad. Tens of thousands of people can see that, that can be damaging for a company. Social media, there was a story of uh, BA and Virgin. A guy came back, uh, Friday night flight from New York into, uh, into London and they lost his flights, uh, his bags on that BA flight. He tweeted on Friday at about six o'clock saying, at BA, bad form, you lost the bags, really disappointed in the service. BA, at the time, had an idea that social media actually sits in the marketing team. Nothing to do with ourselves, nothing to do with our business generation. Marketing team went home at five o'clock. Didn't see that tweet all weekend. 
or Virgin had done, is they'd sell up, um, you know, you saw on BizView the idea of routing into competition, they got that tweet into an agent that was still there, and that agent was responsible for that omnichannel customer experience, picked up and said, at Mr. BA customer, don't worry, we would never do that, here's three flights to New York. Guess how many people over that weekend, BA got their name trashed, Virgin were in the news on Monday morning, marketing person looking after BA, I probably read it on the, on the paper in the way to work. That's how damaging it can be if people don't think about how social media can be delivered. And all these interactions, I guess, it, it, what you'll see in the demo area next door is that it's a one interface for that agent. So whether you've got agents that want to be voice only, whether you want them doing emails, web chat, social media, it's a one face application that gives it all to them and delivers that whole experience. And where we then move on to multi-channel, it's this idea of me as an agent knows exactly what that customer's done and had interactions with us in the past. So if you think of a VIP customer, for example, someone that spends a lot of money with me as a, com as a company, and we had a, a well-known um, watch group in there last week, so I'll, I'll give you the name of the Swatch. They have Amiga as a brand, and they will have Swatch as the low-end um, watch brand. And they were saying, as a, an Amiga customer, they don't get treated any differently to the guy that just spends 20 quid on a watch. So what we're transitioning then to look at is the idea of Mr. Jones that's bought an Amiga watch, whether he walks into a store, whether he goes online, based on a unique identifier, he get very much uh, better treatment in terms of servicing, looking at uh, the agent first time is rooted. So I, as an agent, I may not have ever ever spoken to Ben, Mr. Jones, say so Ben, I don't know if you've got Amiga, my boss over there, hopefully well over. Um, I could, he, the agent straight away can go, actually, I can see Ben, you, you've emailed us three times. We understand, uh, you know, the agent actually delivered, say, he's watched him for a service. Are you calling about your service? We've actually got an update for you. Taking it a step further is what we call proactive outreach management. So, uh, POM, you'll hear it uh, alluded to. What they're actually looking to do then is, on their system, based on the database, if the service level of six weeks goes over one day, automatically, that is loaded to an agent and an outbound call, an outbound email, an outbound SMS is clipped so that Ben isn't having to call up and go, where's my Amiga watch? He's getting a call from us, that's customer service. The same goes for um, a, a travel agency we're working with at the moment. How do they maximize their customer spend? So, bucket and spade company, I booked my flight through BA um, and leading up to that holiday, now, there's no interaction with the customer. They go on holiday, you don't hear it ever again. What they're looking to do equally now on that whole outbound approach is say, right, two days before that holiday, me as a travel agency, I've, I've actually bought a shed load of business seats that I haven't sold. In the past, those business seats would be unused and you'd use that on your revenue. We're saying, actually, why don't, you, why don't you make an outbound campaign for all those customers that are flying on BA, so we've got a special promotion for two days' time, would you and your wife like to upgrade for us for a special discount price? Simple things. The customer feels very, very, you know, warm and fuzzy. Great, they, they take the time to ring me. I'm, I feel important. They're giving me business, business upgrades. The company's making more money, and it's those little gains in customer loyalty will keep the customer for life. Social media users um, prefer easy interactions. Part of video culture. Now, video is a really key part as well. So we're doing um, a trial at the moment with a very well-known high street bank. Now, their, their biggest challenge when we went down to do uh, which we did a, a um, mystery shopper on and went down to a site in, in Brighton, mortgage applications on the high street is a bloody nightmare today. You go into the store and your hours break at lunchtime and you know you've got, you've got to buy this new house because your wife's banging on at you and I know I need to apply for a new mortgage. I go in and I go to the teller at the bank and say, I'm here, I want to apply for mortgage. They look at you blankly and go, I'm really sorry, our mortgage advisor is not here until next Wednesday, can you come back then? I walk out of that, I go online, I look elsewhere and I buy. That, that is them turning away business because they're not ready for uh, transacting on that mortgage and getting the right person at the right time. So what we're doing for them is in 10 stores around the south coast, we're having one mortgage advisor sit centrally at home on video. When, that, when I walk into that mortgage bank, I say I want a mortgage, the teller just all he has to do is say, Mr. Customer, I'm gonna take you into this nice spec room HD video, here's your tin coffee, you can talk to my mortgage advisor right now, right here. So they've taken that week-long transaction down to an hour. You can imagine the, the number of mortgage applications, mortgage acceptances, and that's a really good service. Really simple, the technology's there. 
And actually, the, the biggest challenge for them, on the contrary, was saying, well, that's really good. However, our biggest challenge is actually getting someone that looks good on video. Right? So, <laughs> so businesses face challenge. A few stats, I know we've heard a lot today. So 83% of organizations can't deliver all requirements of complexity blended with customer experience automatically in real time. This idea, again, of this omnichannel, it doesn't have to be Big Bang, but what it does enable is it's, it's giving those, um, I guess it's giving your customers a way of interacting with you. And you'll see it again next door when we show you some of the innovative um, elements we're doing. But another story, if you look, my little brother and sister, for example, when I go down and see them over in the south coast, I pick up the phone, his phone doesn't ring. A WhatsApp, he walks straight back. He's like, mate, I tried to call you. What from your phone? He goes, oh, I'm wrong. It doesn't work. I haven't actually received voice calls for six months. He doesn't care. He talks to his friends by WhatsApp, Snapchat, Facebook chat, all social. But if you think in 10 years' time, he's going to be buying from companies. In five years' time, these guys will want to be able to come in and talk to you guys as companies how they want to do it. So is, is it, are you set up on your website to be able to do so? The other element um, you think of is, is this idea of POM again. So uh, another story we've got was um, with a, a utilities company, Water. So at the moment, utilizing their database of customers in a particular specific um, postcode, when a water burst uh, happens, at the moment, they get a massive influx of um, calls, what we call bad demand, saying, bloody water's broken, why don't I know about it? taking away their agent's efficiency on actually revenue making calls and customer service. So instead, we said, right, let's flip that coin. When a water burst happens, it sends a signal to the database. Everyone in the affected postcode gets an outbound SMS or a call saying, automated call saying, Mr. Customer, you probably won't, when you, when you arrive home at five o'clock this evening, you'll notice your water pressure's low, we've got a problem. What's done for the company? It stopped loads of calls coming in, and the customers going, "That's really good, actually. Thank you. Thanks for letting me know." Proactively outreaching, and again, little games with those customer service will keep that customer for life because the next person they go to that doesn't offer it, <coughs> excuse me, um, will think twice about who they go and serve to. Them. And it doesn't have to be complex either. So we talked about who owns it. You know, these, this idea of silos. You've got sales. You've got the app team contact center, marketing, they're all looking at different elements of the company. Do I, if I email, get a very different experience where I call in? Do they know that I've emailed? Do they know that I've web chat? Very simply routing those multi-channel, omni-channel experiences into one agent interface is a key part of, um, of, of the experience. And again, you'll see it, that is what Avaya do very well, it's the basics and it allows you the building blocks. And because of our open standards, we allow developers to put on the, the app so where Botanic work very closely with us. PCI, recording, we have a, an engagement platform that enables unique things that companies come to us with and be able to uh, implement them to our team. So, voice, email, SMS, web chat, fax, all out of the box, on a platform, how you want it delivered. SMS is another key one, actually, it's really un underutilized. I know if, if, whenever I receive a text, whether it's marketing text for a mum, from an ex-girlfriend, from a brother, I always actually read that SMS. You never leave it unread. As you do with emails, you get thousands a day. SMS is something that our logistics group we're working with very highly was, their biggest challenge was non-first-time delivery um, to the customer. It's a nightmare, you never at home to collect parcels during the day. So their way of alleviating that is actually days leading up to the parcel, sending SMSs to the customer saying, Mr. Jones, your parcel, a reminder, is due on Friday at one o'clock. Are you able to, are you still here? Press one to say yes, two to reschedule. The logistics company are great because they're then reducing that uh, second delivery. Customer services there. And even now, if you think of if anyone used Uber, the app in London, where you can see uh, the, your taxi coming down the road, they're doing the same. I can actually see if I live half an hour away from the, um, you know, from the office, and I have to get back within a time period. Today, the logistics company go, you have to wait in from eight to one o'clock, and you're like, great, I've got a day job, I've actually got to go out of the house and never know where it's going to be. What they're doing is developing an application I can go online, track the car, and within a 15 minute window, be home, meet them for the package, and get back to work. Again, customer experience, and it saves and drives the revenue for the logistics company too. 
as I said about our approach, and it's you know in line with what Chanik, it's this idea of as is to be. So looking at things like revenue, how do we reduce time to market? How do we do customer satisfaction? Equally, employee satisfaction. If you get really good salespeople or really good contact center people, are you developing them as people? Do you have the data to know when your peak times are of your contact center? So actually, on a low peak time, just stop and sitting there being idle. Start scheduling and training for them. Invest into your customer uh, employee satisfaction. Driving loyalty, costs, efficiency, all of these things we can help build in this idea of where you are today as a company, we can help drive you through. Now before we go into the um, into the demo area, something that we, you know, this is a real tongue-in-cheek scenario type idea that we, we help build the company is to help you drive to take this to the board, to the investors into the project, for example, is uh, these scenario ideas. So a bit tongue-in-cheek, but if you think about outbound renewals we talked about, so had a finance company, finance renewals are reactively managed today. It said mining the database on a predefined time basis, all customers due for review of their renewals are automatically found. Automatically, there's no manual intervention here. Customer details are loaded into an outbound campaign, for sales renewal to automatically contact them. So this, the agents themselves are getting fed on an individual basis, they know exactly what they're talking to their customer about, what finance options they've got. What does that give? Company recurring revenue, and it gives happy customers running in green. So little management required, but that's again a business process that's saving efficiency and customer service. <coughs> Scenario two, VIP customers across multi channel. Customer contact company X through blended omni channel. So, whether it's voice, email, web chat, social media, doesn't matter, I respond. Utilizing a unique ID, all customer interactions are presented to the agent and routed to the right expert first time. Now, that first agent um, skills base really is very important. I think Rich and Morris touched about it. Uh, you know, you don't want to have to go through, if I run customer services, I don't want to have to re explain myself to sales, to retentions team. I go in and I speak to the agent. I want to speak to the agent every time because they know me as a customer. I was, uh, when I applied for a Tesco bank credit card, I was sure when I rang up they, they were like the smallest contact in the world. Because every time I rang up, I always proved to the same person. It was, it was a couple of weeks between. I was like, and before I knew about that, and I was like, have they got one person in the shop here answering the call? No, they had hundreds. What's happening is taking my details and routing it back to the person to provide that personalized experience. Are you sure they just weren't all called Dave? Maybe that, right? <laughs> not like the same voice, but again, the customer is greeted in a concise way, already preempting their call or contact. So I, in this case, I've seen you request an online quote, how can I help? Taking the data from your website, from all the previous interactions, it's starting to give the agent that information in real time so they can, can you know, predict what I'm calling about. And again, it's that personal service as I am the most important customer to that company. And it doesn't matter if you've got five agents or 10,000, the same experience across. So, customer speak to the right expert first time, reduces the uh, you know the time to market, improves efficiency, and the issues get resolved effectively. Great customer service. Scenario three, live online support. Again, it's an underutilized uh, part of the website. Buying your mobile phone subscription, you can actually do that now watching EastEnders and half looking at your iPad. On there, I get speak to an agent first time, they give me prices, do a transaction, all done within five minutes enough to talk to anyone. New customers browsing the website and wanting more information around finance terms. The live chat function is launched with a skilled agent waiting to answer any questions. So they're ready, they know exactly what part of the website I'm on, it'll route to the right agent. The customer wants to run through the quote, so the agent simply sends the link, launches a window on the customer's computer and escalate, escalates the contact to a voice call if required. It's moving from a live chat to a voice call. Customer and agent talk through the quote, and finance options in real time resigning themselves capturing that whole customer journey from starting point to end. And that's what you'll see next door around, I think the scenario, if I'm right in, is buying a pair of jeans, is that right? So um, we'll show you that next door. 